In today's tutorial, I'll walk you through utilizing monthly report snapshots to create an automated data validator report in Power BI. In a previous video, I discussed how to generate these snapshots from an existing Power BI report using Power Automate. Today, our main objective is to spotlight any changes in historical data and effectively communicate them to your stakeholders. We will be working with aggregated monthly sales results from our SharePoint folder, and we will create three matrices one for actual results, another one for previous version's result, and the third one to highlight changes. After covering these and diving into the measures behind them, we will focus on visually representing these changes. To top it all off, we will set up another automation to send an email to report users if any historical data has changed. So be sure to stick around until the end to fully grasp this awesome process. Now, let's dive into the intro. Hello and a warm welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to guide you through the world of Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. By doing so, you won't miss any of my Power BI videos. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. Today, I won't be covering the process of creating these snapshots. If you missed that video, be sure to check out the links provided below or in the corners above. I always seem to have trouble pointing to the right corner. Now that we have monthly snapshots of our data, it's time to run some essential data validations against them. I'm eager to see if there have been any changes in historical data, and if so, I want to understand the magnitude of those changes. Let me illustrate with an example. If the changes are less than 5% in absolute value, I'm happy to initiate an investigation and involve only the state manager. However, if it exceeds 5%, I find it necessary to include more senior stakeholders. This threshold might vary depending on your specific situation, so it's crucial to define your tolerance for data changes. With that in mind, let's move over to my PC and create that year-to-date data validator. Alright, let's dive in. Our first step is pulling data from our SharePoint Documents folder, where we've been storing those monthly snapshots. Getting this data is a breeze. I'm simply importing the entire folder along with all its versions. After that, it's just a few easy data transformation steps. First of all, I want the source name field to only display the version, and we are using ISO date formatting for this. Then, it's on to renaming columns. Lastly, we'll tweak the column times to get everything just right. Now it's time to load the data. Just a friendly reminder, today we are focusing on aggregated data. We won't be diving into item or custom level specifics. This is all about data validation. Alright, let's talk about the first matrix. We are looking to show version by version monthly sales broken down by state. This just requires a simple sum of amount metric. Now, onto the second version, which is slightly more complex. Our main goal here is to track down sales from previous version. I set up a variable for the current version and another one for the minimum or first version. And this is where the ISO date format really shines. It makes referencing date a breeze. Next up, a third variable for the previous version, taking our starting point into account. Finally, it's all about shifting the total amount back to the previous version. I'll pause here for a moment in case you would like to snap a screenshot of the text I've used. Go ahead, take your time. Last but not least, we'll put together a relatively simple measure to calculate the change from the previous to the current version. As I mentioned earlier, we'll need some color coding to guide our report users and help them spot historical data changes. So. I'll create a measure for that. And with that done, we are all set to apply conditional formatting based on this measure. Great job! We've wrapped up the first phase of today's tutorial. Honestly, this report is ready to be put into use. You, as a business analyst or even the report consumers, can dive in, examine the data, and if you come across any orange or red cells, start digging into the why and take necessary actions. But I did promise to share a method for creating a visually more engaging report. And let's not forget, we still have the task of automatically notifying stakeholders if historical data has changed. So let's head back to Power BI 
and work on enhancing our database. I'm going to show you two powerful methods for presenting the information we gathered about historical data. First up, we'll explore a combo chart with small multiples. Then we'll dive into a high-level change monitoring tool. As we dive into creating these visualizations, please keep in mind that I'll be creating separate measures. These measures will have slight modifications to the original ones to ensure they behave optimally when we represent the data in these formats. As I'm no longer using the date field, I need to make some adjustments to my total amount. This measure ensures I can compare apples to apples, so to speak. This change also impacts my change to previous version measure. Now, not only do I want to capture the new total amount, but I also want to create a relative change metric. Additionally, if there are no changes, I prefer not to clutter my visual with unnecessary numbers. And there you have it. With these two new measures, I can now move on to tweaking the visual itself. Let me fast forward to the point where everything is nicely formatted. I really appreciate this format as it immediately showcases results and highlights any changes in historical data. Now, let's move on to the second method, presenting high-level details using a matrix and a card visual. For this approach, I'll once again create a slightly modified change metric along with a color coding measure that will be instrumental in driving the conditional formatting. All right, let's wrap up the finishing touches. I'll also incorporate a third version of the change metric into a card visual. This card visual will play a crucial role in our automated communication process, but I'll delve deeper into that later. Now, the final piece of the puzzle. Let's expand on our previous flow to automatically send that notification if the change to previous version is not equal to one. Allow me to walk you through my solution for this. I'll begin by pinning the card visual to a dashboard, which we'll name Data Validation. On this dashboard, I set up two alerts based on this style. The first one will trigger if the value is above 1, and the second if it's below 1. Next, let's head back to our flow. To work efficiently, I'm going to expand the snapshot flow with the following steps. After the create file action, I'll add a new step to refresh the Data Validation dataset. Since there's no trigger to wait until a dataset is refreshed, I usually employ a delay action set to the right time frame. In this case, 5 minutes. Then we need to create one trigger for the above alert and another for the below alert. We can do this by adding a parallel branch in Power Automate. If either of the alerts is triggered, I want to send an email to the relevant people. To set up this OR condition, I first add the condition, pick up the first trigger and set the trigger status to TRUE. Then I'll add the group to pick up the other condition. Lastly, if any of those alerts are triggered, meaning the IF YES condition is met, I use the SEND an EMAIL feature. Alright, it's time for the exciting part, putting our setup to the test. I'll be adding two new versions for May and June. In May, I keep the historical figures intact, while in June, I'll introduce some changes. Let's dive in and see what happens. What we are doing now is essentially mimicking the Monsi data acquisition from the data provider and running a refresh for our base report. After the report refresh is complete and the figures are updated, I click on the Create Snapshot button and closely monitor how my flow behaves. First of all, I'm glad you're still here. Let's take a moment to recap the fantastic progress we've made in these two tutorials on data snapshot and data validation. We started by crafting a report that automatically grabbed the latest file, ensuring that our reports display the most current figures. 
Within this live report, we added a Power Automate button, allowing report consumers to take a snapshot of the data, which is then saved to SharePoint. Leveraging these snapshots, we also built a data validator report that flags any changes in historical data points. Through the power of Power Automate, we ensure that the snapshot creation trigger not only refreshes the data validator, but also sends out the email notification if there's any changes compared to the previous version. This seamless integration empowers us to stay on top of the latest data and act swiftly, if needed. While there may be some tweaks to further streamline this process, it's already proven to be highly effective in my solution. My team was happy when we went live with this fully automated system for historical data monitoring. And remember, while I demonstrated these examples on a small dataset, rest assured that it's just as effective on significantly larger and more granular datasets. But the real question is, what are your thoughts on this solution? Have you ever tackled something similar or is it completely new to you? Feel free to share your questions, comments, or any experience you have with this solution in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Since you stuck around till the end, I'm confident that you found value in this video. If that's the case, please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Don't forget to explore more of my tutorials like these ones above me. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.